these are the only products you would need as a beginner to do a full face of makeup so everything in this kit is very much affordable and all these products are everything you would need as a beginner so first you always want to start by prepping your skin before makeup application remember a good base always determines the longevity of your makeup and makes sure that the makeup is evenly applied and doesn't move around if you skip the skin prep process then I can guarantee you your makeup will not look good so I like to start by using the Neutrogena Hydro Boost water gel so this is a good moisturizer for all skin types after moisturizer you want to prime your skin with a primer that suits your skin type primers are important because they help to protect your skin from absorbing the makeup which will make the makeup products apply smoothly and will last longer so if you have oily combination skin or if you have like large pores on your skin I would recommend using the NYX professional makeup pore filler primer because it helps to reduce the oils on your skin and it also minimizes the appearance of like textures and pores so if you have oily skin you want to apply the primer all over your skin and if you have combination skin you only want to focus the primer on the areas that are oily which is the center of your face if you have dry skin I would recommend the NYX Hydra touch hydrating primer this is a really good primer because it helps to hydrate your skin so that it's not too dry when you apply the makeup so before applying the makeup you need to have the proper tools for applying the makeup so I would recommend getting this real techniques everyday essentials kit it comes with four brushes a contour brush setting powder brush a blush brush and it also comes with a beauty sponge for your complexion product so next you want to apply foundation so the most important thing about foundation is that it should match your skin tone and your skin type you don't just want to use any type of foundation that you find in store you definitely have to know your skin type if you have dry skin you lack moisture on the surface of your skin so you want to use one that will help lock in that moisture a really good foundation is the NYX born to glow foundation because it's a moisturizing foundation and it leaves the skin really radiant if you have combination skin you want to use a foundation that has both because combination skin is both dry and oily and a good foundation for combination skin is the ColourPop pretty fresh hydrating foundation so this foundation is oil free but it's hydrating at the same time so it's perfect because it has both for combination skin if you have oily skin you naturally produce oils on the surface of your skin you don't want to use a foundation that would add even more oils on your skin so you want to opt for an oil free foundation or a matte foundation a good foundation for oily skin is the Maybelline fit me matte and poreless foundation so to apply the foundation I like to start with one pump and then build the coverage this is always best to prevent cakey foundation and then to blend it out you want to use a damp beauty sponge or a foundation brush try not to use a wet sponge or a dry sponge because it won't blend out your makeup the way it's supposed to it's supposed to be damp so the way you dampen your sponge is you run it through water and then you squeeze the water out on a paper towel to remove the excess water then you use that sponge to blend out your foundation if you have oily skin a brush might work better for you so I would go in with the real techniques foundation brush just to blend out the foundation so next is concealer so concealer is very similar to foundation but it's usually used to cover up imperfections on your skin such as like dark circles acne redness and even discoloration similar to foundation you want to opt for a concealer that matches both your skin tone and your skin type so if you have dry skin you want to opt for a concealer that has a lightweight formula because that will help the concealer blend on your skin naturally to brighten up your skin so a really good concealer for dry skin is the elf cosmetics hydrating camel concealer a good concealer for oily skin is the l'oreal infallible full wear concealer because this concealer is an oil free concealer and it also has a matte finish so the areas under our eyes are usually dark so we apply concealer around the inner corner and the outer corner of our eyes to brighten it up even though the center of our face doesn't have any shadows and it's not dark we apply concealer on those areas because light reflects on those areas so you want to place concealer around there as well to help highlight the areas which is on your forehead the bridge of your nose and your chin area 
I like to let the concealer sit for about one minute before blending it out as this will give it more coverage when you're blending. So to blend out the concealer, you want to use the sharp part of the sponge, but avoid using so much pressure because the sponge will just absorb the concealer. Instead, you want to lightly tap on the concealer so the sponge does not absorb the product and you get that coverage from the concealer. Once you blend it out, you want to go back in with the side that you use for the foundation to go over the harsh line of the concealer to give it a blended look. As you can see here, the concealer has coverage and it's covered up all the darkness and there's no harsh lines and it looks really natural and skin light. So once you apply concealer, you want to use a setting powder or a finishing powder to absorb the oils that came from the foundation and the concealer. This will also prevent that makeup from moving because cream and liquid products tend to move around on our skin when we're talking and when we're laughing. And so you want to set that so it does not move. A really good finishing powder is the Black Opal Deluxe Finishing Powder. So this finishing powder can be used to set concealer. It can also be used to set foundation as well and it's really good for all skin types and it really helps prevent the makeup from moving so after applying the concealer they're usually like creases under the eyes and you want to get rid of that first before setting your skin because if you don't do this you're gonna be setting those creases which you don't want so you just want to use that sponge used for concealer to lightly tap under your eyes to blend it out and immediately you want to use the powder to set it so I like to press the powder at the back of my hand first to get rid of the excess powder then I slowly press it right where I placed the concealer this will allow your makeup to look more skin like and will prevent you from using too much powder as you can see this powder has absorbed all the oils on my skin and there's no creasing under my eyes to set the foundation, you wanna use a pressed powder. So I like to use a pressed powder that it has light coverage because I don't wanna add more coverage onto my skin because that's what can cause your foundation to cake up. So a really good pressed powder is the NYX Can't Stop, Won't Stop Pressed Powder. And I like to use the Real Techniques foundation brush to just apply that all over the areas that I placed the foundation. This will prevent that foundation from moving around. So next you wanna apply contour and bronzer. So contour is usually applied after concealer when you want to add back dimension onto your skin so I would recommend this black radiance true complexion palette because it comes with the contour and bronzer and it's really affordable so they have different complexion palettes so you want to select one that is closer to your skin tone the one that I usually use is medium dark and if you're of a deeper skin tone then I would say use the dark to deep and if you're of a lighter skin tone then you want to use the light to medium so first you always want to start with contour to apply contour you want to focus it right on your cheekbone structure on your forehead and your jawline you want to place your fingers right where your cheekbones are then you want to place the contour right where you feel it with this real techniques contour brush for powder contour you want to avoid packing it because if you pack it it's not going to blend flawlessly so instead you want to apply it in circular motion so that it blends with your skin applying it in circular motion will diffuse the pigment making it softer and natural as you can see now my skin has dimension it doesn't look flawless but I'm lacking warmth and color in my skin so that's when bronzer comes to play so bronzer is usually applied on the same areas as contour but it's usually above the contour the easiest way to apply bronzer is to draw a three on the sides of your face so from your forehead to your cheekbones and then towards your jawline area so I like to use a fluffy brush to apply bronzer because it helps to soften up the look versus contour where you want to structure the look so you want to use a dense brush for contour so I'm gonna use this real techniques blush brush so you can use this brush for blush and bronzer so because bronzer should soften up your skin you want it to be well blended so you want to apply it in circular motion as well to help diffuse it so that it's not too harsh and a fluffy brush will really help you blend that out so that it looks softer as you can see my skin has dimension and it has warmth so it's a little bit more realistic. So for blush, I really like this BH Cosmetics blush palette. I've been using this for a while and it's one of my favorites because it comes in different colors. But the shade that I usually like is this one right here. So to apply the blush, you want to focus the blush on your cheekbones to soften up the structure. 
So I like to use a fluffy brush, so I am using the one by Real Techniques because it's really fluffy, so it's going to help soften up the pigment. You want to avoid picking up too much pigment of the blush, so instead you want to pick up the pigment very slowly, barely touching the pan, and lightly pat it on your cheekbones. Then you want to bring it up towards your hairline to diffuse it so it looks like it's fading. And for highlighter, my favorite highlighter is the Milani Baked Highlighter in the shade Apricot. This is a really nice highlighter because it's not powdery and it's really, really affordable, so it's very beginner friendly. So. Highlighter adds that really glowy and feminine look, so you want to place it on the highest points of your cheekbones, on the button of your nose, and the pointy part of your forehead. I like to use the Real Techniques brush that comes with the kit because it's a really small fluffy brush that helps to really blend out the highlighter. For eyebrows, I like to start off with a spoolie. So I like to just start by brushing up my eyebrow hairs. So you definitely want to do this to make sure that your eyebrows are going in one direction before applying the eyebrow product. This allows you to see like where you need to fill in the eyebrows. A really good eyebrow product is this Wet n Wild Micro Brow Pencil. So this is really easy to draw out your eyebrow hairs. And I like to get a dark shade. So for eyebrows, you definitely want to get something that matches the color of your hair your natural hair so my natural hair is black so I usually get a black shade and this is really nice because it's kind of like a pencil it's not a pen so it really helps to draw your eyebrow hairs and if you mess up it's really easy to clean it versus using an eyebrow pen it's a little more pigmented so I just like to take concealer and just curve out the eyebrows and I only focus on the outer corner and then for eyeliner I really like this elf eyeliner pen so I like to just draw a small wing sometimes but if you're a beginner you don't have to draw eyeliner I wouldn't recommend drawing eyeliner if you're not the biggest fan of it this eyeliner pen is really really pigmented and it's a felt tip pen which is the best eyeliner that I like to use and I would say it's the best for a beginner so for eyeliner I like to start on the outer corner of my eye to draw a line and then I like to tie in the line coming towards the inner corner and I like to stop halfway because I have smaller eyes so this allows my eyes to be a little bit bigger it doesn't close it up too much because remember eyeliner is usually used to close up your eyes a really good affordable mascara is this Essence Mascara. I like this one because the wand is very small, so you can use it for your top lashes and your bottom lashes. And so I like to just coat my whole lashes with this mascara, going from the bottom, bringing it all the way up. And then for lashes, my favorite beginner-friendly lashes are the Ardell Wispies. So these are the 700 ones. I like to cut the size based on the shape of my eye. And then I use the dual lash glue and I put the lash glue on the lash band and I place the lashes right on top of my real eyelashes with a tweezer. So next is the lips. So I'm going to line my lips with the NYX Cosmetics Lip Liner in the shade Espresso. I really like this lip liner because it shows up on the skin. And it's really really rich and pigmented and it lasts a really long time and then for the lips I really like this butter gloss so this is a very old product but it's a really good product and I feel like it's also very beginner friendly because you can apply it every day and it has a little bit of color so the shade that I like using is the shade praline the most asked question that I usually get is how do I get my makeup to last for a long time without it moving without sweating and all that stuff and the answer is to really really set your skin really well and this is why you can't skip setting spray because it really helps to lock that makeup in place so it doesn't move think of it like this when you do your nails the last coat that you apply is the top coat because it really helps to make your nails look nice and shiny it's really that protective layer that protects the nail polish it's the same thing with setting spray it's used to really help melt your makeup into your skin so it looks skin like and it protects the makeup from budging moving and it gets rid of that powdery look from the makeup so it looks skin like so for dry skin I really like this hydrating coconut mist because it's super super hydrating and it helps to like refresh the the makeup and then if you have oily skin and you want to use products with oils then I think this Mario Badescu facial spray is really nice because it has rose water which is super hydrating 
but it doesn't contain oils and it works for all skin types even after knowing all this if you don't have an exact foundation match your makeup will not look good put together because a good foundation match is the most important aspect that determines how good your makeup looks and that's why you really have to watch this video right here because in this video I really break down the different techniques on how to find your exact foundation match for your skin. KLJ, welcome to a channel where it's popping.